eventually the yoga that great master baba saavan singh taught which i practiced and found very useful is also yoga but it's called surta shabd yoga surta shabd yoga means surta is attention shabd is sound and to put your attention on the sound and have union now this is in a little bit uh, misunderstood by people that surta shabd yoga what is the idea of putting your attention on a sound wouldn't you like to put attention on yourself wouldn't you like put attention on where you belong wouldn't you like to put attention on god what is this business of putting your attention on sound but the theory behind this is very simple and i want to explain that today because the surta shabd yoga worked for me and that's why i'm sharing this information with you shabd means sound it can be spoken sound it can be shabd that is just he sang a, a song it can be called a shabd i am talking to you i am talking in shabd the word shabd is just a meaning that something that can be heard by us it is audible and that is why we call it shabd but this is uh, not merely an expression of a sound or a word when you look at the spiritual literature of all religions you find mention of it there in the christian bible james uh, john's opening verses in the gospel says in the beginning was the word that shabd in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god all things were made by him and nothing was made that was not made by him all reference to the word the bible has placed the word ahead of god as if the god was also made by something that is audible like a word in the rig veda of the hindu literature in the four vedas four vedas deal with all aspects of human life the rig veda deals with the spiritual side of it in the rig veda the entire creation is supposed to have come from a nad nad a song or a sound that comes in islamic literature they talk of bange asmani that is a sound coming from the sky or isme azam the highest name when you see this we realize they are also talking of a sound every literature every religion the founders have emphasized the importance of something that is audible you can call it sound word some have called it the music of the spheres so all this show that this gets reference to something that is just a sound in various forms and that is why what is the great importance why talk of sound rather than power energy things like that so i'll explain that what that really means and why how it has been practiced sound is essential for us to go on a spiritual path supposing i had not given you my talk at least i could not share what i have experienced i have given my talk in words and sound starting point you read books words you read your mind repeats them sound very first step in getting any information about the spiritual path is in words but these are spoken words written words and in great masters punjabi talks he would call them varnatmak shabd varnatmak means which can be spoken and written can be varnal that means it can be communicated through spoken language that means sound can be twisted around to make words and people can understand you the varnatmak shabd is the beginning of a spiritual exercise without that you don't move forward then the masters tell us that there is a sound going on within you if you put your attention on your own self they say put your attention on the third eye center which i mentioned to you yesterday and they say you can hear a sound what sound is that 
people have questioned how could they, how can we hear a sound and a sound that pulls you if you put your attention on it that is the sound of the self it's not any other sound it so happens that when we are in a human body our consciousness which has taken the form of a soul inside a human body the soul is manifesting itself in the form of sound why does it manifest as sound because if it doesn't manifest any other way we take it as an experience outside there's a big difference in experiencing sound from outside including varanatmak sound and experiencing sound that's coming from your own self now if the, there was no sound at all situated as we are in human bodies we would never know where we are who we are it's a very easy way to identify that we are somewhere as a soul as a life force sitting somewhere in our head and that is emitting a sound it's not a sound coming from anywhere else therefore when we hear the sound inside that sound or shabd can become an expression of the self we do not hear sound just for the sake of hearing a sound it just so happens that the one sound not all sounds one sound comes from our own self our own consciousness as it is sitting in a human body in a wakeful state that is why it becomes easy when we use other methods to prevent a distraction of our attention by repeating words why do we repeat words which they call mantra or simran it's not that there is any power in the mantra unless they have been made special or empowered by some magical way by a master or by a yogi or somebody otherwise why we repeat words is to prevent the mind from thinking some people speak with their tongue and keep on thinking about the things that's no good no matter how big the mantra is no matter how powerful the words are if they are only being repeated with the mouth like a varanatmak shabd and the mind can think anything they are useless but if the mind is started to speak and that's the correct way to use the words if you repeat the word with the mind then you are replacing the thoughts with those words and that's the main function main function of repetition with the thoughts is that you are replacing your other thoughts and as you concentrate your attention on those words it helps in removing thoughts but this is only helping you to localize yourself in the area within the head but there is no pull in that you can't pull yourself to yourself by merely repetition of any words no matter how better good they are so therefore the best way to pull yourself to yourself is to put your attention to something that is manifesting from your own self this is one of the greatest gifts given to us that this self of ours true self the ultimate self is generating a manifestation in different forms and the most easy forms to follow is the sound that emanates from it the sound can be recognized because it is somewhat similar to a sound that we hear in a big bell and sometimes people wonder was that the reason why the big bells were put up on the churches was that the reason that every religion tries to play with bells and music is that the way why chanting is started is that the way why music is a part of all religious ceremonies maybe it is maybe it's just a symbolic way to express that the self in the physical human form at the wakeful state can be accessed by listening to it why are we not listening to it all the time then if that is the self because our attention is not on our self our attention is on the experiences of the self and all these experiences created by the mind by thoughts and by the sense perceptions and with the functions of the human body are taking us outside there is nothing to pull us inside we close our eyes it is dark 
Why should we go inside? There's nothing to attract us. Outside, a lot of attractions are there, which have been created as an external world of ours, external creation. So that is why we are not listening to it. The only way to listen to it is to shift the attention from outside to inside. It takes a little while, but if you are repeating words in order to localize yourself, your attention inside your head, at least you can know you are there. And some people think that this is a magical formula, just keep on repeating, something will happen. No. You must listen to the words you repeat. Not repeat words, listen to the words you repeat. Secret listening, not repeating. We missed that point. That is the listening capacity that's so important in us. And you will find sounds change with the levels of awareness. Ultimately, they are not like a sound at all. It is a sound only in the physical level. They change as we go along. And therefore, you cannot even call it a sound at a certain stage, yet it looks sound from here. That is why it's just a manifestation of the presence of our own self as a soul, as a unit of consciousness. And that is why the capacity to listen goes on. These sense perceptions, I mentioned, five of them recognized in our body, in our astral body, all five senses are there. After that, only two senses remain. And which are those? Seeing and listening. These two continue. That is why the other experiences become visions and listening. So listening is a very big thing. When we repeat words and listen to them, the effect is also the same because that draws you to your mind, which is inside, and you're listening to words being repeated by the mind. It helps you to go, and then you can listen to your own self, the soul. These are covers upon ourselves. The soul is covered by mind, mind is covered by senses, senses are covered by this physical body. They're all lying within. And as we listen to something deeper, we go deeper and become unaware of the outer cover. A very simple method. When we hear the sound that I'm speaking to you, or the repetition we do in ourselves, those are varanapmakshabd. That's not the sound that is representing in any higher awareness. It helps. When you begin to hear a sound that is not being uttered by you, it is not coming from outside, it is not a biological sound because of the blood circulating in your veins, it's not one of the sounds that you can feel is coming from right, left or anywhere. When you feel the sound is coming from the center, a little above the center, where your consciousness at wakeful state resides, that's the sound that will start pulling you. It's an amazing experience. If you catch that sound, it helps you to withdraw your attention from the body faster than anything else. And this is an experience many people have. The secret is the sound. That sound when you hear is not a sound that we write or we speak. And therefore the varan atmakshabd turns into what we call dhun atmakshabd. Dhun means a sound that continues, but it's not something that we're using in words. So varan atmakshabd becomes dhun atmakshabd when it starts pulling us inside. Then we don't need anything else. People sometimes keep on repeating the mantra, maybe it'll increase the sound. It does not. Because the repetition of the words at that time is only bringing you back into a mental level which was used just to put your attention behind the eyes. When the sound that pulls you come, nothing else is needed to go further on your journey to your own self except listening to that sound. The Dhonath Makshab will take you and if you listen attentively for a sufficient period, you will see you become unaware of your physical body faster than any other means. So that's why it's such an important thing. This is the secret of the Surta Shabda Yoga, that you can attain what you want, self-awareness and self-knowledge by listening to the sound that comes from the self. It's a manifestation of the self. It's different from other sounds. Now why I say other sounds? Because when you close your ears, close your eyes, want to listen, you can hear many sounds. Many of them are physiological phenomena. 
and people can see that they are because uh, when you are in high tension, many sounds can be heard, apart from the gurgling in the stomach and some other sound which people hear. I am not talking of those at all. But these sounds that you can hear in the ear, some seem to come from the left ear, some come from the right ear. Those sounds are being generated by different functions in our physical system. And some people have thought that listening to this sound on the right side takes you up, left side brings you down. I, I should clarify that, that this is a mere statement made because of the location of the intuitive side and the rational side in the brain on two sides. And that is why it's recommended if you cannot hear any sound in the center, then preferably listen to the right. But a man comes to me and says, I have been listening to this sound in the right ear for 15 years, nothing has happened. I said, nothing will happen. You are listening to a sound which is not yourself. But these mistakes we are making because we haven't understood what the purpose of the sound is. So that is why I'm explaining. These sounds that come, and they can sound like sounds, thunder, sounds of drums, sounds like crickets, sounds like birds chirping. These are all temporary sounds that come from various sides of the head. And they, none of them has a pull to help you to go to your own self. And still I recommend, if you cannot hear the sound of the self for a while, no harm listening to these sounds, because still you are local, localizing your attention to somewhere close to the head, somewhere close to the center. So I call them practice sounds. So you can practice with these sounds till the real sound can be heard, which will be in the center. It will be like it is surrounding you. That is a surround sound that you can feel it's all around you. Sometimes you can feel it's all around you only inside. And when it starts pulling, you become less aware of the body. It looks like surrounding you all over, and surrounding all even outside of yourself. Because when you are pulling your attention from the physical body, another outside opens, which is not this outside. So when you hear it all around you, you think maybe it's around in this space. It's not. It's an inner space. So the inner space opens up like a new sky. And that is why the sound looks like a surround sound. And it has a very strong pull if you put your attention on it. And that is the sound that takes you to the next stage. Dhunnat Bhakshabd, the listening to the sound which is not words, but can be heard very clearly coming from the center of your head within. Next step. If it takes you to a point where you forget your physical body, it can open up the entire experiences of the next level of awareness. 